the budgets for, for training uh, are rather reduced than enlarged in, in, in many companies. On the other hand, we know that constant updating of your skills, of your knowledge and of, of what you learn is important. So yeah, there's kind of a discrepancy there, I think. And uh, so more and more uh, of, this, of this need to update your skills and need to update of learning is pushed onto the individual, pushed into the, into the workplace. Yeah, yeah, you can do this while you're, while you're actually working. Yeah, and, and I think we are, we're looking for ways of how to, how to make this more effective, how to make this learning on the job more effective and more efficient for people. It's especially, it's especially uh, important for SMEs because um, SMEs, they usually hold a very specialized type of knowledge and that's what makes them important and strong. Uh, they don't produce uh, mass market kind of uh, things. They are very specialized usually and they have a strength in very particular fields and so there's a very high need for them. They cannot send their, um, their staff to like these general uh, trainings. They have very, very special kinds of needs and, and expertise. And this is the yeah, kind of expertise and knowledge we want to, we want to tackle when we, when, we, yeah, when we support people in learning. So we want to strengthen the, the, the SMEs in developing their strengths that they already have with the workforce they have and, and with the new workforce that is entering. This is a great opportunity because uh, SMEs are usually um, Working, to, working together, they are competing, but they are also working together. So an SME alone uh, usually is not strong enough to, to, to hold up in, a, in competition, but they can team up with other SMEs. So for, for certain situations, for certain contracts, for certain ideas they want to realize. And uh, I think what's missing at the moment is kind of uh, to have this, to have a cooperation infrastructure also, so that where they can yeah, easily um, yeah, cooperate with each other. Uh, and of course, this is, a, this is a real big challenge because you don't want to uh, have everything open because there is competition, of course, in the region. But you also, also the way of having everything closed is not the right way because you need this cooperation on the other hand. So finding the right balance there between cooperation and closeness, I think, is the, is the main thing we are dealing with or main, main challenge we have in the project. In a cooperation project, there's lots of lots of talking, lots of yeah, negotiating with each other, speaking to each other, working on on common things. But it's really hard to aggregate it or make it transparent and make it visible to everybody, make it sustainable also. So I think this this is something where where technology can can offer real real breakthroughs if if if, the, if technology can be used uh, in in making things more persistent than they are now. So now they are very fluid and, 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 and they go away. Making, making things more uh, um, persistent over time, I think, is, is, is one of the main breakthroughs. And of course, this happens then on many levels. Yeah? So you, you have, um, of course, maybe document stores that you can, where you could put things. But it's also about, um, you know, what kind of what kind of terms, what kind of categories, what kind of vocabulary basically people use. If you can make this more visible to, to people and, and let, them, let them see basically the, the, the universe of, of, uh, of terms and so on that's there, then it will be, in my opinion, it will be easier for people to, to collaborate with each other because you have this persistent uh, layer of, of, um, yeah, of meaningful things around them. I think it's an important project, uh, primarily for three reasons. So primarily for three reasons, that's a contradiction in itself, isn't it? There's three reasons. I think Layers is very interesting in that it's got a co-design approach. It's not just one of those technology research projects which says, we're trying to design something and then we're going to test it on some people. We're saying this is a joint project with researchers, with developers, and with end users, different stakeholders in the project, all working together. And I think if we can get that right, and it's not easy, the co-design process isn't easy, if we can get that right, I think it will be a, a model for the future. Secondly, I think that layers is important because it's addressing the needs of people in small and medium enterprises. We've got a lot of e-learning going on in big companies. We've got MOOCs taking over in the universities, opening it out. But employees in small and medium enterprises 
which are probably the most important growth area in terms of the economies in Europe, have had very little access to the uses of technology for learning. So it's going and targeting precisely in that area. And the last reason I think it's important is because we're focusing on informal learning. Whilst 90% of development projects have looked at formal courses, LAYS is looking at the learning which takes place every day in the workplace and looking at linking up the different contexts and places in which we learn. And that for me is a fairly unique project. Well, I'd say there are a few reasons, different reasons, why layers is important. I think it's important for uh, the medical uh, practices that we're working with because they already have a great deal of pressure on them. There are huge financial pressures. Within the UK, we have um, a national health service and there's only limited amounts of money and we want to provide the best care to all the public, all the patients. And so finding learning from how we're doing that and learning better ways of providing care is really important to GP practices. And so for them, what this project brings is help with that urgent need. Um, for those of us in research, I think what's really important about uh, layers is it allows us to take theories and ideas we've had about how technology can support learning and instead of just running those on small groups um, instead of running those theories and uh, evaluating them just with undergraduate students we actually go and take these theories out into the real world and try them on a large scale with people who are dealing with the real richness and complexity of working life and test these theories, test these approaches and see if they actually stand up and learn more and find better ways of doing things. In the health sector there's a great deal of money and effort and time put in by people into uh, improving how services are delivered in the health sector and yet um, a lot of this is top-down improvement. Um, in the UK. So there's a national uh, guidelines and national prescripted ways of working. And in fact, some of the most effective uh, changes in working and some of the most effective ways of learning are local developments. And I think what learning layers can bring for us is ways of people sharing that local learning earlier and more easily than they do at the moment. So that these improvements in healthcare are actually coming from the bottom up as well as from the top down. Well, we have everyday situations. Take a building site and take a situation where a person who is new to the building site is uh, feeling lost. And exactly to support in a situation like you are lost, layers is for there. So I think layers is important because uh, so far a lot of um, technologies and a lot of projects have actually concentrated on more the formal part of learning, but the informal part actually plays a much bigger role in practice and has so far been little supported. And if it has been supported, it has been only in a, in a closed environment and not really going towards networks and towards larger groups of people uh, where they just need, they need structures. They need support uh, and a lot of people, especially in areas where they are not so familiar with technology, they need a, a kind of um, help with that, uh, need things that are easy to access and that also help them to learn how to do informal learning. It concentrates on a topic that is un both under-researched and also under-guided in practice. It's the topic of professional workplace learning using advanced technology. And these things, you know, kind of in th using technology in a way that actually make, uh, helps people make sense out of what they're doing during their workplace activities has been uh, tremendously advanced during the last couple of years. There's a, there are waves of new people coming in with university educational background, for example, but also with uh, apprenticeship backgrounds. So no matter which you know, type of formal education they got, 
They already are used to exchanging opinions, connecting with other people, using social networks. Um, they are already used to having several different sources from which they can draw knowledge, from which they can learn, um, not only their sup supervisor, as it was 20 years ago. And these tremendously changed processes need some more understanding. See, because otherwise we see that there is something new happening, there's some description about what's happening, there's also maybe even prediction of what in the future will happen and sometimes this already translates into new policy prescribing what people or organizations should do without correctly and profoundly understanding what we are actually doing here. That's why I think it's important to, sh to, to raise the level of attention and understanding of communities, of organizations, of societies for how to deal with workplace learning. People are using technology in their everyday lives in big time. There's 6.9 billion mobile phones, people with mobile phone services around the world. There's only 7.1 billion people in the world. So you've got this idea where you've got this pervasive technology out there and, and people are using it to, 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 to kind of browse the internet on their smartphones to, or tablets to uh, you know, to look up information, to chat using, Scar uh, using Facebook. So we're looking to take that massive change in ownership of these powerful tools and use them in the workplace to, to kind of help people in their, people work informally, we call it. They, they learn informally. When you've got a problem to solve, you're working in a team on the job, you, you sort of, you need to talk to someone. The doctor needs to talk to someone and say, have I got this diagnosis right? So we're trying to help them sort through this mass of information that's coming at people using technology in a smart way, in a lightweight way that helps them solve the problems they need to solve in, in, in their work practice. So that's really what I think is new about what we're trying to do. Get to, get to the parts of the workplace that other innovations haven't got to. It transports the uh, very successful idea of having clusters. So uh, really things which have driven innovation, uh, in particular in, in high-tech industries in the US, uh, into professions which are becoming high-tech. Yeah? So uh, like in uh, construction, yeah? construction was uh, always thought to be a, a very uh, basic uh, work. But nowadays, yeah, many aspects of uh, construction are already high-tech, so we need um, uh, better skilled workers, we need knowledge workers in construction, and uh, LEAS is creating awareness that uh, knowledge is uh, for, for uh, construction as important as bricks. It's important because there's a lot of studies in, about learning in workplaces, but uh, nothing really that addresses directly informal ones and, and try to push it forward. So, uh, well, I'm more acquainted with, with the activity theoretical things that they have been doing in the workplaces, but it's more explicit things and it comes sort of from the outside and try to do interventions. This sort of tries to go inside and provide persons to do the changes and interventions. And it is important because it's not really a lack of genius we have, it's more or less a lack of connection we have. So <laughs> I think learning layers is a great chance to get the right people together and to get something out of it. I think we're in a world now where using technology at work will become more and more part of what everybody does. It'll be ubiquitous, it'll be expected of people. And hopefully this will be a way of um, helping people to integrate new technology into their working day without too much stress in a useful and innovative practice. Speaking as a researcher, we have noticed that uh, it triggers quite a lot of innovative thinking and rethinking with our application partners in the construction sector, some of them being in training centers, some of being multipliers of somewhat alternative innovations, and some being just ordinary craft trade companies. But they all get somehow inspired and networked with 
the questions we are posing to them. They start thinking uh, not only what are the problems and hindrances, why they have not been so far using web technologies, services, but they start thinking what the benefits might be or how can they learn of others' mistakes that have been preventing them in the past and what might be the ways to overcome uh, the difficulties in the past. I think that uh, no learning uh, happens without uh, support, without scaffolding and uh, how to do it in the distributed settings in, uh, and with the technology, with the mobile things, this is something new, I think. I think it's important because it's doing necessary research. Mobile technology uh, is an emerging technology. Over the last 10 years it has um, progressed greatly. Um, and I think this project is addressing issues that are important um, and will uh, answer many questions in terms of using that technology for people in their, in their daily lives. At the moment, particularly in British general practice, there's never been so much change and we now more than ever need to work in teams and share our knowledge and share um, our, uh, the knowledge that I have, have it built up with the knowledge of the team. We don't deliver care individually as much at all as we used to, so we work in teams more and more. In this respect that we can bring our technology, which we have developed on the Technical University of Graz, yeah, into the system and test it with real users, such as, for instance, recommender systems, yeah, um, which we think will help the people in uh, finding the right information yeah, or the digital artifacts, which will help them uh, in their learning process. Um, I think that these kind of projects uh, 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 they are the way uh, how new ideas get introduced to, to practitioners. Uh, there are very many smart people around the table and, and there's a lot of uh, exchange of ideas. And this is really what, uh, what, the, what the companies, the practitioners, uh, rarely have time for. And, and for us also it would be difficult to gather such a, an amount of, uh, let's say, intellectual talent in, in one place. So this is really unthinkable for us as, as a company. So this is why it's interesting for us to participate.